have a little bit more sunlight each day. Before we begin our class, big kudos, big thank you as always to the Hoboken Public Library for allowing us to have these hybrid classes that are now on YouTube, on Zoom, and also here in person at the Public Library. So we soldier on, we are the art heroes during this time of pandemic. Thank you, Hoboken Library, for allowing us to do this. We are continuing with our theme of art as gift today. And we're looking at a very interesting artist. This person is so cutting edge that he is called post-conceptual. So last week, we looked at a conceptual artist this week, we're looking at someone who is post-conceptual, which means he's even more new and more different and unusual than the person we looked at last week, who was Peter Doig. They're often mentioned in the same sentence, however, so I guess Peter Doig is pretty cutting edge also. So as always, we will start with a little bit of biographical information about Mr. Wool, and then we will segue right into work that I would like you to have fun with today. Uh, I got here a little bit late today, so bear with me one second while I open up some images of Mr. Wool's work. Oh, before I do that, I want to correct a mistake that I made yesterday. Those of you who are with me at the Multipurpose Center yesterday, I said incorrectly that Paul Clay is Austrian. I don't know what planet I was on. He is not. He is a Swiss German artist. So try and fix that falsehood in your brains, everybody. Hunter Wassert, who we also looked at yesterday, is definitely Austrian. And today, Christopher Wool is an American artist. And I'm going to put up an image that I feel is really emblematic of what he does. Why is it this? I never know why this thing is here. Okay, let's just enlarge this. Everybody able to see this at home and in house? This is a painting by Christopher Wall. I'm going to try and Move the toolbar out of the way. Can't really, but it's better at the bottom than the top, I think. Christopher Wall was born in 1955. Again, he is an American artist. And since the 1980s, his art has incorporated issues surrounding post-conceptual ideas. He lives and works in New York City and Marfa, Texas. And he lives with his wife and fellow painter, Charlene Von Hale. I know nothing about her. Her name is spelled H-E-Y-L, but I want to learn more about her um, when I can. He was born in Chicago. His father was a molecular biologist and a psychiatrist. He grew up there. In 1973, he moved to New York City. Uh, where he enrolled at the New York Studio School. Any of you who know anything about the New York Studio School, it is a highly academic art school. It's very difficult to get into. You have to be exceptionally skilled at realistic drawing. Most people who get accepted draw 
photographically, their skill levels are so advanced that you would think, you know, they were close to Michelangelo or Da Vinci. So look at what this artist creates mm -hmm. and think about where he started. The same place I've been having you folks start figurative drawing. So he spent a few years at New York Studio School learning formal painting and then dropped out. And he became more interested in film and music, underground film and music. And between 1980 and 1984, he worked as a part-time studio assistant to Joel Shapiro, who was a conceptual artist. So he's best known for his very large scale paintings of words on white canvas. And this is one. He likes to rearrange the letters. He likes to drop the vowels in his words. Frequently what the words say and mean don't make any sense unless you read them out loud. So there's an audio component to his work as well as visual. There's oral as well as visual component to his work. Now, rumor has it that he got the idea to do words on white canvas because one day he was walking through the village and spotted a brand new white truck, truck on the side of which was graffitied words, one of which was the word sex, and the other words, give me a minute to find it. Love, but spelled L-U-V. So he was inspired by this image to the point where he started making multiple paintings like this. And he's making mega bucks now. He sold one painting for close to $30 million. He, um, I could find nothing about how or why he chooses the words that he chooses. But for example, one of his most expensive paintings came from words from Apocalypse Now, Francis Ford Coppola's film, very famous movie. And the words are based on the Joseph Conrad novel, Heart of Darkness. Um, is there deep meaning behind these images? I don't know because I really don't know his process or why he picks the words that he picks. Um, this one though, I think has a message. It says prankster. Maybe he's trying to tell us not too subliminally that that's what he is. I don't know. But what I really like about his work is the idea of taking letters as shapes and form and presenting them as images, not just as sounds or symbols of meaning, but as things, simply things that we can look at and consider. I love the way he arranges the black shapes on the page. I love the font style that he uses. And apparently he has worked with different font styles. He usually uses the silk screen process. So they are not painted on the canvas, they are silk screened. And he uses stencils which if you were with me yesterday at the multi-purpose center, I did a demonstration of, and I will do another stencil demonstration 
today to show you how it works. I also had alphabet stencils that I lent to the husband and I was searching everywhere this morning to find <laughs> and could not find them, unfortunately, but we can make our own. So Christopher Wall has received a great deal of recognition. He was named a fellow of the American Academy in Rome in 1989. He received the Wolfgang Hahn Prize in 1992, and he was honored with the Amphar Award of Excellence for artistic contributions to the fight against AIDS. He's had solo exhibitions, one at the Gagosian Gallery in Beverly Hills. And some of his word paintings are the most sought after pieces on the art market. As of 2013, seven word works feature in Wool's top 10 auction sales. At Christie's London in February 2012, Untitled from 1990, a later word painting bearing the broken word fool, sold for 4.9 million pounds, which is $7.7 .7 million. In November 2013, art dealer Christoph van der Weg bought Apocalypse Now from 1988 for $26.4 million on behalf of a client at Christie's New York. Wool's monumental black and white word painting Riot from 1990 sold for $29.9 million at Sotheby's New York in 2015. I could go on and on and on. So painting words pays, guys. Sending that out there into the ether and into space. All right, let's look at some more of his word paintings and then I'm gonna give you your assignment that possibly could be lucrative <laughs> for today. Yeah, you never know. I want to show you some of the work he's doing now, though. He's kind of moved on from words, and then we'll come back to the word imagery. He didn't start it. Like no, no, he was a figurative artist, very academic. He was a traditional academic painter. This is the kind of thing he's doing now that he says is figurative. I personally love this piece. And he does work in acrylic. Um, the technique, he likes to use rollers. So he'll roll the background and then he spray paints and paints with brushes the lines that he then scrapes or rubs off to give this kind of smeary effect. He's a monochromatic guy. He uses a bit of red, which you're gonna see in a moment, but he primarily works only in black and white. I like the action in this. This is certainly reminiscent of Jackson Pollock. Those of you who are my veteran students, we've talked about Pollock in the past. A lot of movement in this painting, which really draws me in. It's very textural. Very textural. Thanks, Heather. I like this better than the words, quite honestly. And I, but I'm having trouble with the post-conceptual. That yes. Term, like, a little bit precious, yeah. shall we say? And, and a lot of people, you know, like Jenny Holzer and Ed and Shea, and even like um, Jim Dine, the number five, what's that? Um, oh, uh, Jim Dine, and um, 
I'm forgetting. Motherwell has used letters and a lot of people have used words. You're absolutely correct. Yes. So he is not the first. Christopher Wall is not the first artist to use words in his work. And we have looked at some of those people. So thank you for reminding us. And Heather is saying that um, the term post-conceptual is a bit, you know, pretentious, perhaps. Mm -hmm. What does it really mean? I'm sure if you Google it, you could find an explanation. Heather also said she likes this better than the word paintings. Anybody else, if you have a comment, please chime in. So Eileen and Heather are discussing why that other piece that we just looked at was textural. It did not look smooth. It looked bumpy for sure. I hate this toolbar. I don't know how to make it go away. Any of you out there in Zoom land who know, feel free to share. Okay, so this is obviously one of his word pieces, although he's injected some shapes into this as well. And I cannot detect what this one says at all. Why not? It's annoying. I like his other stuff, but this is like a little annoying. Can you explain why? I think it's a little too hard to delve into. There's too many hard edges. Okay. Dive into it. So it's a little confusing, maybe? Would that be a way of maybe expressing? I feel like it's more irritating than confusing. Okay. Thank you. That was, um, Jim was making a comment that it's irritating this piece. <laughs> there's, like this and I get that, it, there's a lot going on. So it's. More carefully. <laughs> See, I like this one as opposed to just a simple letter. Okay. And Heather likes this one because it, there's more going on in it than in the simple flat letters. In the circles and the lines. Okay. So this one seems to combine the abstract lines with the more geometric shapes of the letters. So we have some hard edge, yes, definitely hard edge shapes intermingling with the line work of abstraction. This one to me is the most commercial of all the ones we've looked at. This one to me looks like it was made to sell more than any of the two of the three that we've looked at so far. This one's kind of topical. <laughs> he does seem to choose words freighted with meaning deliberately. Although I could find nothing about that in what I read about him. Interesting. Well, the joke's on that. Breaks, it's not on him. Yeah, breaks that up has nothing to do with Japan. Yeah. What, Eileen? That's a long word. He breaks it up not so lot in syllables, but in whatever word wide. Right. Well, he's, that's part of the visual thing that he's doing, I think. Not so much about what the word sounds like, but. He's doing a visual presentation. He cares more about the visual than he cares about the meaning of the word. Are these dated? Probably, I don't have the dates for you. These come from the 1980s. Okay. Why do you think he chose those? These are very relative now. Yes, I said, this one is topical, isn't it? So is the other one. Uh, Prankster. Prankster, yeah. You're right, Stephanie. You thought of Roger Stone immediately. Roger Stone, that might be referential. Yes. 
you think? Um, how much do we love the white spaces in the letters? I don't know what the name of this typeface font. is. Font. But I so love the white openings. Like that you bought on like where you spray your trash can. Yeah, Pat, it does. Mm -hmm. Yes, so Pat said it's very industrial looking like the stencils you can buy in the hardware store to spray paint the numbers on the front door of your house or something. When you say she is a graphic designer? No, he, he did not have design training at all. He went to a very traditional academic art school. Well, wasn't graphic design at that time like so all of a sudden like a big thing? Well, Warhol definitely made graphic design a very big deal like in the 70s. Like all of a sudden, it was just like everybody was graphic designer. You know what I'm saying? Like it was very trendy of the time. It was too. certainly more acceptable in the art world than it had ever been before. Yeah. Yes. You're right. I also think of Robert Indiana. Robert Indiana is the number guy. Yeah. Yes. And the love guy. Yeah. And the love guy. Yes. You're absolutely right. Robert Indiana really was at the forefront of using letters and numbers. And then Jasper Johns. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying to figure out why you have a white on the black. Why did he choose what he chose on each letter? Good question. Why is he only using black and white? No, I said, what? See the white on the black? Like, what? For example, H does. Like, it's the H style H of the font, Eileen. Yeah. He didn't paint over that. Okay. It's the he style of the font that he's using, and he uses something called stencils to make a. Oh, it's called the stencil font. Laura looked it up. That makes sense. Well, and I should have mentioned, too, at the beginning in the biographical section, Wool was fascinated by font. So once he started this work, he studied font for quite a while until he hit upon the ones that he liked. I said that. I said that in the intro. One particular white truck that he saw that had spray painted on it two words. Yes. Good. Good sleuthing, Laura. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, fact check me, guys, all the time, please. All right, so I'm, here's one of his more famous ones, and then we're going to talk about what we're going to do today. I like this one tickles my funny bone. <laughs> This one is called Sell the House, Sell the Car, Sell the Kids. <laughs> and I love the way he arranged the letters on the on the canvas. So this one, I think, for me, it's kind of obvious that this one is about the consumerism of the 80s. I mean, consumerism is alive and well today, but in the 80s, it seemed to be rampant. We were all about buy, 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 buy. It was the glitter age, right? The 80s? Disco, glitter. That was our modus operandi. We got up in the morning just to buy glittery stuff. 
sell the house, sell the car, sell the kids, whatever it takes to get that cash flow going. All right, so we are now going to talk about what you can make today. Um, perhaps I should put up one more picture while I'm talking. We'll share this one. He also did his letters in red. This one's the cover of the prestigious Paris Review. Um, so he was not a graphic designer, but his work often appeared in graphic spaces. So our project for today is to think about words. Um, I did put in the email that I sent out last week that you should come to this class prepared with words that have meaning for you, either words from a poem. Yesterday, I mentioned at the Multipurpose Center, words from a song. Names are good. You can look through magazines or newspapers and headlines for words that might ring a bell for you or stimulate something creative within you. And I want you to think of the letters in those words as shapes. I'm going to demonstrate how you can make stencils for the letters. And then I'm going to invite you to create your own word image. Now, we are in the holiday season. Stenciling is a great way to make holiday cards because once you have the shapes cut out, you can create multiple of the same thing with one stencil. So if you are thinking about someone you have not gifted yet, you can do something in the holiday spirit about this or with this project idea. I'm inviting you to think monochrome, either choose black and white or one color with a white background. I'm not gonna force you to do that, but this kind of imagery works best in monochrome. And we were about to talk about that. Why would you think Christopher Wool only uses one color at a time? It helps to make a statement, but why? No distractions. No distractions. Good, Margo. I think the answer is so powerful and so obvious. You're not, it's so strong, guys. Look how strong this message is. You can't miss it. And this is why maybe we were thinking graphic design. This is what advertising does to us. There is nothing subtle about this image. And that's because it's only one color and it's a strong color. It's really hard to turn away from red. It's really difficult to ignore black on white or white on black. So I'm inviting you to experiment with using only one color and white. All right, everybody get it? If this is so foreign and so wild and crazy for you that you don't want to attempt it, Go abstract. Think about the techniques I demonstrated for you last week and do something more in the abstract vein, similar to what Christopher Wool does now. Let me show you one of those again. Here's a different one. And many of you said you like this style of his work better. So he uses rollers and spray guns and brushes in this kind of work. So gather up your supplies. 
This is most fun if you use paint, particularly acrylic. Watercolor would work. Um, oil pastels would work with this because they're very bright and intense. If you're doing stenciling, you want something like a lightweight cardboard, like tag board. You're gonna need scissors if you're stenciling. And as always, you need a piece of background paper. So Laura's gonna get things set up so I can do a demonstration for you all. And let's start going to work, unless there's questions. Yes, Jane has a question, fire away. Oh, and I wanna mention, sorry, Jane. I meant to mention this at the beginning. Jane is gonna start having yoga classes here at the library in January, January 11th, I believe is the first class. Are you gonna be Zoom as well as in person? No. It's <laughs> No, it's, and because it's during the day, we're not, we're going to make it. Okay. Oh, after this? Okay. Is it after this? Yes. Yeah. No, okay. It's going to be two to three on Wednesdays, but in person only. So my question was. Um, All right, guys, start gathering up your supplies. Oh, Liz. I have. Oh, sorry, right, Jane had a question, duh. So, um, They're gigantic, they're enormous. They're mural sized pieces, so yes. Right. Right. If you know the work of Jenny Holzer, who is also a person who uses words all the time, when you walk into one of her spaces, literally covered with enormous words, it's a powerful experience. It, it really blows your mind, literally. Okay. So I'm going to get set up to do the demo. You guys gather up your materials. If you already know what you want to do, if you know how to make stencils and that's the direction you want to go in, have at it, get started. So I'm going to stop the share on this baby now. Right, Laura, I should stop the share on this so we can set up the camera for me to do the demo. Yeah, why not? Oh, something in the chat here. Let me just check that. Oh, and I want to put the name of Christopher Wall's wife because she's also an artist for those of you interested. Whoops. As a wife of an artist, I'm very sensitive to being overlooked. So there's her name, Charlene Von Hay, I believe it's pronounced. Oh, Margo, you can hear me now, obviously. Okay, good. That was before you were here. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, sometimes it changes when he's at my opening. Yeah. The hat is on the other hand. <laughs> Frequently, people come up to him and say, Oh, I really like your work. And he goes, Not mine. <laughs> and they go, Oh, no, no, no. I had no idea. <laughs> I'm so Tomorrow, we're going to use the table where you are sitting to do the demonstration. Yeah, you can use that piece of 
See if we have some more. Oopsie. Listen up. Just take a little bit. You can always go back for more. Correct? Yes. All right. So, stencil learning. You need me. Clean, you're going to want to hear this, I think. Can you hear me? Yep. You're going to need a lightweight cardboard, like the kind of cardboard that used to come in dry clean business shirts, yeah. for example. You know it's cardboard if when you shake it, it rattles. You know the sound that it makes? To create the stencil, there are two ways you could do it. If you're doing a shape that's symmetrical, you can fold it in half. And you draw and cut only half of the shape. And when you open it up, you have the full shape. You can't do that with most letters, however. You could do it with the letter H, the letter A, the letter W, the letter M. That's about it. So what I recommend if you're doing a stencil, I'm going to cut this piece in half. Well, I'm going to do one big one. I would ask though that you not use a whole piece of cardboard for each letter. That's a little bit wasteful. But let's see what uh, my word is going to be art. So I'm going to draw the letter A, in pencil first, and I'm choosing to do this style of block lettering. Why? Because it's easy for me to cut out the shape. 
I'm going to cut out the positive shape of the letter. So the actual shape of the letter. And here's how. I'm going to take a pair of scissors with nice pointy tip, and I'm going to poke a hole to get started. I just poked a hole anywhere in the letter. Can you see where I poked the hole? Mm -hmm. That enables me to now work the scissors in. And I'm going to cut out my letter. It's difficult. But you can do it. You may not be able to get right up to the edge of the drawing that you created. But you can get close. I'm doing that so people can see what I'm doing. I would prefer that maybe you cut the cardboard in half. We're going to run out of cardboard. I understand, but I'm, I'm just trying to understand. Yes. <laughs> so. Now, I will say this when you get to be my agent stage, the larger the letter, you make the easier it will be to cut out. So, if because of the way your hands are working, filling the page with the letters is the only way you can do it, then go ahead. Now we have a problem with the letter A. Does anybody know what it is? The middle. <laughs> And I'm going to show you how to surmount that problem in a minute. So we have the main shape of the letter A, but we're missing the middle part. What in the world can I do? Same thing. I'm poking a hole, and I'm going to cut out. Actually, you should poke the hole on the corner. I'm going to cut out this part of the letter A in one big piece <laughs> if possible. And I'm going to retain this piece and keep it in the middle. And then I'm going to take a brush and my paint, and I am going to stencil. Now, the real trick with stenciling is you have to hold the tag board down on the edges with. <laughs> One hand, keep the tag board flat on the paper. So that hopefully the paint will not bleed underneath. Everybody understand that? If you don't press the tag board down, you just, it, it's not the end of the world, but you get a messy, raggedy edge. And I like to do the edges first. And obviously, because I made my letter so big, I'm not going to be able to fit the whole word, word art on here, but you get the idea.
here is the shape in the middle of the A. I'm holding that piece of cardboard down in the middle. <coughs> and now I can have a lot of fun just loosely painting the rest of the letter in. <laughs> If you don't want to use paint, I'm going to show you how you can do this with oil pastel. Now, if you've done it correctly, when you lift the stencil, look what happens. Magic art party. <laughs> There's your letter A. And you can do the same letter over and over and over again. Now, my stencil is wet, so, and I wanna now do a letter in oil pastel. So what I'm gonna do is use my positive shade now because it's dry and look what you can do with oil pastel or crayon. with the shape that you cut out. I love stenciling because there are so many different directions you can go. So two different A's. Both very strong. shapes and forms. So with this one you use negative space. This one you use positive space. Eileen, you're shaking your head. I'm going to come and show you. Anyone at home have any questions before I start moving around the room here? Everybody good to go? I'm so excited about this project. I can't wait to see what folks come up with. Oh, Susan had to go early. So sorry. I beg your pardon? What that one screams. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just put these away and I'm going to come through. I like that one. What do you have a word that you want to do? Yeah, there's fewer letters you have to use here. That's what I want to do. Okay. But that's not the problem. I was talking about. Take the vowels off. Like he did. He removed the vowels. I want to show you how to do one. 
So I just stand up, stand up. I'm going to show you how to do one more. Stand up and stand up. And I'm going to sit down and show you. Anyone else who needs to watch me make a sense of my own. Um, this is scrap. We're going to cut out the inside. Now, in the real world, we would all have utility blades. It's much easier to do. I was just thinking about
But I did the exact opposite. <laughs> But you, if you did it like outside of the line. So then I had a negative on the right hand too. If you want a positive D, you can paint on the Thank you. 
And I'm making the letter small. So, folks at home, I did not make it clear. You don't have to stencil if you don't want to. There are other ways to make letters. You can freehand draw the letters. You can use a ruler to make your letters. You could make bubble letters. There's all different styles for letter making. You could sponge print letters. Maybe some of you have letter stamps. You could do that. If you don't like the, the process of stenciling, you can use other techniques for lettering. I demonstrated stenciling because that's what Christopher Wolf uses. And Vanessa, if, if you want to continue working on that art project you've been working on for a while, go for it. I was thinking about starting that, but I did some things. I'm doing some things on the computer with the words. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But I'm going to switch to it to next. <laughs> okay. So Laura's going to go around and show you pictures of what folks here are doing in class for ideas, those of you at home. You're welcome, Vanessa. That That's a lovely idea. I love when you do this, Laura. Thank you. So Laura's going to take the camera around. Those of you at home, if you want to see what's going on, you can. You don't have to look if you don't want to. I know, Robin, you're deep into what you're doing. That's awesome. This is Heather's Eiffel Tower. I love it. I do. I do too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
This is makeup. Pat stenciling. She's using soft pastel, which never occurred to me, and it works. Jane has been knitting today, which is awesome. <laughs> Sally is doing her letters with a ruler. Why not? <laughs> and Tamara's jumped ahead to the new year already, and she's printmaking with a shaped brush. She's making a lovely painting. Robin's loving it tomorrow. Anybody at home want to share now? No, you're still you're still in the beginning. Vanessa, do you want to? Susan's gone. Oh, Susan had to leave. Okay. I'll share Liz. I'll sh I can share my screen if that's okay. Yeah. Close this door. We would love to see what you've done. Okay, so I've um I actually created a f my own font that I put into um this program in the computer which I had. Guys, listen up! This is Vanessa. She created her own font. Look at the TV screen if you're interested. I hit share. Host disabled Vanessa. participant screen sharing. Oh um. Laura, can you enable Vanessa to share her screen? I see you. No, but to her image. You could okay. see my computer screen? No, I can see you. We can see you. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, it still says disabled. Try it now, Vanessa. You're a co-host. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, how awesome. Look, what program have you used? So this is Photoshop, but the, um, okay. I can't recall the app, but I can look it up and then email you so you can share it with everyone next week. Um, but it's, it's a, it's an app, I guess. And then you can draw out your own font and then download it into the computer so that you can use your font within any program. So right now I'm using Photoshop. Awesome. So I'll just do. She's gonna let us know and I can share with you next week. I could even see if I could find it. Um, while we're here. I just started playing with different things. She has created her own font in Photoshop, but apparently there's an app that you need. It's an app, yeah, it's a website you could go to um, to create your own font and you print out a paper with, and it has all the letters. It's like a, like a graphic looking paper and then it has little boxes for each letter and then you can draw your own letter right in there and then you scan it in and then it uploads and creates your own font and then you can download it into and to your computer and then it'll you can do it in word you can do it in photoshop illustrator all the any program yeah do share that information with us I will. She's going to find it for us, Eileen. Yeah, I'm going to look. I'll look it up now. I'm loving how the we are water, earth, air, fire. That okay. one's my favorite. That's my favorite, too. <laughs> yeah, we did. We had a, a month where we did digital art, but unfortunately, I'm not skilled enough. <sighs> You need Laura the library if they can find a digital artist to teach a class. That would be great. Okay, I can stop sharing my screen. Let's see. Well, I love it. Keep working on this. Thank you. You're on to, Vanessa, you're onto something really good with this. Thank you. 
I'm trying. I'm sorry. I'm not unsure how to unshare my screen. Did I stop? You stopped it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And Robin, we look forward to seeing something later, if you're willing. Oh, wait, you want to share now? OK, well, what I'm doing, because I don't have other times to paint, I'm making backgrounds uh, for Christmas cards. And like, I don't know, the light is all weird in here. They're, they're just simple backgrounds of different colors. And Very then, nice. then I will start printing on them or drawing on them and your idea of letters uh using letters but they're they're just like backgrounds and this is a painting i did this a long time ago but this was a a christmas card with uh, leaves with snow on them beautiful so i'm just i'm just having to do that because i don't have any other time i'd like to follow along with you more but i needed to go this way but anyway the ideas and what everybody else is doing and showing was helpful especially the brush that someone used to make the 2023. Yes, that's a shaped brush. And that yeah. shaped brush will come in real handy when I... It's called a fan brush we're doing here. So thank you. All right, Robin. Yes, it's called a fan brush. It looks like a fan. <laughs> it looks like a fan. It talks like a fan. It is a fan. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go back to walking around the room here, folks at home. Let me you now. If you need me, call. Yeah. I know I did it backwards. No, no, that's how it works out. I would make the white even wider, but I would do it internally. I would make the white line wider. Liz, I added the website so everybody can see. I put it in the chat just so you know. Oh, thank you. She said she put the um the website. In oh, the chat. okay. Thanks, Vanessa. You're welcome. All right, so the website for making your own font, I, I'm going to make a note of it. I want to find it, is calligraphr.com 
Well, maybe it's pronounced calligrapher. C A double L I G R A P H R dot com. I'm going to email it to everyone. K-L-L-I-T-R-A-P-H-R. Yes. Why did you drop the E? What E? No E. There's no E. There's no E. Okay, good. You know, Eileen, with web addresses, they make it as short as possible. With web addresses, they make it as short as possible. <laughs> what? Calligrapher spelled C A L L I. G R A P H R dot com. You're welcome. I will email everyone later. Vanessa, did you send it to everyone? Yeah, I put it for everyone in the, sh okay, in the thank chat. You. Excellent. Yeah, look at it now, Jen. Isn't that stronger? I would make it even wider. I would keep going, make make it even broader. So stenciling, for those of you who have young people in your life, stenciling is a great way to teach positive negative shape. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, it's right next door to the supermarket.
I used to go all the time, but I don't take the car out that much. You're doing great. Persistent, patient woman. Don't We good at home? Everyone happy? Okay, good. Sure. I will tell you that the people at home are deeply focused. Sketchbooks and scrap papers and boards. Tested out first on size and then 
All my at home people aren't even here. They're off camera at the moment. Do you want to share, Robin? This is not my thing, but anyway, so I tried to use on one of the cards, I don't know if you can see, I, this is very prosaic, but um, I use the that funny brush you talked about. Dan brush, okay. And, background. And, and I'm not finished. I'm just playing around with the idea of letters and different. Can you see it at all? I don't know. Yes, it says love, peace. Yeah. Excellent. So I'm just thinking of a few cards I have to send out and using some of the things that we've learned from you today. So thank you. <laughs> so you are literally making a gift out of your art today. That's yeah. Awesome. This, this is one it looks to this is a blue one and it looks almost like kind of like in the clouds yes so anyway i'm just playing around thank you well done robin thank you for sharing okay oh it looks like vanessa had to leave too margo okay margo's still in the house want to share well i'll share but it's not it's not brilliant but i did do the stencil on a card <laughs> and then i did um the reverse stencil oh i love it on this one hold them both up please i like and you use the stenciling technique for both yes but this i cut out and i printed you know the the, the positive cut. shape yeah in this i did the opposite uh, with the letters, you might want to outline. Outline, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Darker? Because <laughs> they're watercolor. <laughs> yeah, something darker. It's watercolor. Yes. Uh, so, maybe colored pencil for an outline. I was looking for this, but I couldn't find it in time. <laughs> uh, well, make something else. Yeah, I may. <laughs> I'm doing cards. <laughs> Okay, somebody else making a gift, literally a gift out of their card. I love it. Art from the heart. You, can, <laughs> you cannot have heart without art. Thank you for sharing. Have I missed anyone at home? Who's off camera? I don't think so today. Vanessa and Susan had to leave early. And I guess Stephanie, Stephanie, are you still there? I don't think so. Oh, Rima. Rima. I didn't know you were there. Rima, do you want to share? So thrilled you're with us, Rima. Yeah. Sure, you can share next week. Absolutely. Or you can send me a JPEG. Okay, cool. Okay, Laura's going to go around and show off the work of people in house. If those of you at home want inspiration, this is Jen's awesome home stencil. She did it in white and black, both. It's very powerful. 
Nice. I love how the letters are joined together. Yeah, this is Heather's great, great painting. Robin, unmute. <laughs> if we could see them on the big picture, right now we're seeing your art that's in the little, you know, picture at the top. Like I see a person, but I don't see her. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Perfect. Oh, wow. Wow. You got a wow on that one, Eileen. Thank you. Whoever said it. Lovely. And this is Mika's Joyful. She started with stenciling, and now she's adding. Ooh, I love this. This is one of Pat's many pieces. Mm. She's done stenciling with soft pastel. It would never have occurred to me to do this. Look how lovely. And this is the piece she started yesterday. Love that. <laughs> I want to get a picture, but just my phone is nowhere in sight. And this is another one she just started working on. Wow. Have her show the other one first, the mountain one. And she used paint markers for this one. Paint markers. Hey there. And Sally is drawing her own letters with a ruler she's working so hard this is very painstaking work and tomorrow's 2023 explosion of joy Woohoo! talk about painstaking beautiful work yay so we will have one more class in 2022. We will have art next week. Awesome. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. And folks who are in house, start cleaning. Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. I hope you ask for lots of art supplies. <laughs> Tell them to get you art supplies. A gift certificate to Dick Blick, always a perfect holiday gift. And you can buy online. And they don't have to pay for postage. Yeah, well, folks in house, you really need to start cleaning. Folks at home, you can keep working indefinitely. So we only have one ladies room for cleaning brushes. Be creative in your cleanup techniques, folks, here. And Rima, great. I look forward to hearing from you. Anyone, at any time, you can send me JPEGs of your work, and I will get back to you ASAP with suggestions and advice. Bye, everybody. Bye, Jane. Have a great weekend. <laughs> the concept of cleanup is far into this group. Have you noticed? <laughs> oh, shades and joy of elementary teaching right here. Oh, yay! <laughs> My A plus
I don't know if it's the bad news or what was it, but I was very upset. It really does. Anyway, I'll see you Friday, right? Yeah. If not sooner. Uh, tomorrow. You're going to what? I'm going to send out a note. It's going to be a smaller group, so I'm going to suggest that we yeah. place roast, which it has couches, but it's small. What's the name of it? Roast. I'll put the address. Oh. And then All right, guys at home. I'm sorry, Heather. I'll see you soon. Guys at home, I'm going to say goodbye, Merry Christmas, and don't forget, we do have class next week. Yeah. I will see you next week. Ciao, Bye. Bella.
Monica. Art on. Margo, please, if you see um, Dina and... I did already. Oh, you gave them my regards, I hope. They, they know and they'll be in right, touch. Thank you so much. I miss Lauren and Dina so much. All right. Hold them. And give your husband a big hug for me. It's going to be a tough holiday for him. All right. Bye. Bye, everyone. I'm leaving. Ciao.